All right, it's working. Hey friends, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. And tonight is night number two of painting the happy flowers design. This is, or sorry, not happy flowers. This is not the workshop. It, I've got flowers on the brain anyway. Flowers for mom design. So last night we painted it like the one hanging up behind me on a wooden round. And uh, I used a 12 inch template. Tonight we're using a 20 inch template and I'm gonna be painting it on a piece that I have cut out with a jigsaw. So, so let me explain why I do it four different ways over four different, over four nights. It's kind of to kind of show you uh, the progression that somebody who is entering the Painters Clubhouse would begin with and what they could end up developing into after, you know, several months to a year or so. So, you know, on day number one, if you join the Painters Clubhouse, you may only be comfortable tracing your designs onto a wooden round or to canvas. You may not be comfortable cutting out your designs yet. Um, and so cutting out a piece out of jigsaw may, with a jigsaw may seem a little bit intimidating. So I wanted to demonstrate last night that you could use our templates on a round like this and still make something super cute. Or um, you could also transfer it to a canvas or whatever. Um, hey, Roxy. Hi, Jody and Kim. Good to see you guys back again tonight. Hey, Chastity. Uh, she's excited to watch tonight and learn even more from me. I appreciate that. And so tonight we're going to be transferring it to the jigsaw cut piece to kind of represent a person who might be in stage two of the painter's clubhouse. Maybe they've gotten up the guts and the courage to use a jigsaw or a scroll saw at this point, and they've cut out their first piece and um, they're able to use their templates on that. And so we're going to be painting it and I'm going to actually use a little bit more um, detail than on the one that we did last night because we're also going to, not just with the jigsaw, are we demonstrating that this is stage two, but with the detail that we put into the door hanger. Um, so we'll be sprinkling a little bit more pizzazz on it tonight. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Michelle. Hey, Ashley. Hi, Yari from Puerto Rico Island. Ooh. Uh, how is my neck? Feeling pretty good. I laid on my neck retractor this afternoon, it's sitting at this table a lot kind of messes my neck and back up. So that's what she's asking about. I had been laying on the, my neck stretching thingy and a pillow, whatever it's called, and it's helped a lot. How thick is the wood? So Dana's asking about the wood. That's a good question. So this is quarter inch revolution plywood. You can find it at Lowe's. It is a type of plywood underlayment. You can get it, um, you can't get the revolution at Home Depot, but you can get a plywood underlayment type wood at Home Depot. Um, you can paint on either side. It does not matter. Now, sometimes you'll buy this kind of wood, the plywood underlayment, and it'll have something printed on one side, like the logo or the brand that makes the wood. Uh, hey, Mary. Hey, guys on TikTok. And so if that happens, just use a sander or something and sand off the words on the wood so that you can paint and don't have to worry about painting over those. You're excited for tonight's live. Thank you. Um, so if you did not get a text notification letting you know I was going live, you can get text notifications by texting me at this number. So um, if you want to screenshot this now, I'm going to take it off so it's not in our way. Um, also, if you want to text the word list to that number, I'm putting together a supply list for each night of what we're painting with all the colors that I use and uh, supplies and things like that. So if you want to recreate this project later, you'll have a nice neat little PDF with a link back to the video and the supply list and all of that that you need. So just text the list to this number. If you've done that once in the past for a previous project, you'll be getting that list too. No need to do it again. Hello, Eileen, watching from Maryland. Uh, hey, Sharon from Memphis. How many of you guys have joined the Painters Clubhouse? I looked just a moment ago and we have welcomed 185 of you guys into the Painters Clubhouse. Y'all have blessed my socks off. I'm so happy for you all because this is the beginning of your painting journey. If you want to kind of get more of an idea of what Painters Clubhouse is like, I want to suggest that you go back and watch a couple of the lives that we've done earlier today at 9 a.m. this morning. We did a virtual tour of the membership, taking you inside the membership site, letting you see what all's in there. And then at 2 p.m. today, we did a live interview with two Painters Clubhouse members. We did that yesterday also. So you can go back and watch those and kind of hear it from those people who are in the membership, what it's like. Okay, so what we're going to do first is transfer our design to the wood. And you can do this before or after you cut it out with a jigsaw. But depending on how you're going to paint the design, 
you may want to wait because if you decide to, you know, base coat the entire thing with something else, then you may want to add this as a secondary sort of thing. So this is graphite paper. I'm laying it across my design and I'm just going to feel underneath for where the design starts and stops and align the template with the edges as best I can. So line it all up so that it's matching underneath. Feels pretty good. And then you're just going to take an ink pen and you're going to trace the design. Don't pick the design up until you've got everything traced. And we don't have to go around the outer edges on this one. We only have to go around the lines that are on the inside because of course the outer edges are already cut out. And I'm just using an ink pen for this. You could also use a pencil or a stylus, anything that's going to apply pressure to the graphite paper and push the, the design through um, and transfer that graphite. So someone just informed me the other day, and I did not know this, that graphite and carbon paper are two different things. Did y'all know this? Is Am I the only one who did not know this? Um, but apparently... Graphite is harder to erase than carbon paper, and I'm not sure if I traced that flower or not, so I can pick it up and kind of look, and no, I didn't. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I need to find some carbon paper, because sometimes, like, you get, you accidentally transfer graphite in a spot you don't want it, and it's nearly impossible to erase, and it's real hard to paint over, too, um, and not have it show through. Oh, I just realized I cannot see your comments. That's important. Hey, Penny from Arkansas. Hi, Christy from North Carolina. Um, Roxy says, I bought my own FYI I jigsaw and I watched your videos. I'm ready to cut. Yay, Roxy. Ryobi, I got gotcha. you. I, I see what you're trying to say. What kind of jigsaw do you use? Lisa says, I use, um, I did use a scroll. I was checking to see. I missed a spot on a flower. I did use a skill saw for a long time. That's the brand, skill. And um, I've recently switched to Ryobi because I have a Ryobi cordless jigsaw that I love now. Okay, I missed the bottom half. It's hard to paint or to trace things and talk at the same time. <laughs> um, and I missed a few lines. But I have a cordless Ryobi that I really love. So that's the one I used today to cut out the these. Now, I will say, if you have struggled at all with cutting out door hangers, the blade makes all the difference, for real. All the difference. Um, I may transfer this wording on at the very end, since it's not going to be hard to line back up because of the shape of it. I can easily line this back up. So I'm just going to remove it, um, and I'll put the wording on at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. I'm wearing my, my blue gingham glasses today because I thought they went good with my Murray State shirt. So, uh Carbon paper smears a lot. Well, graphite paper kind of does too, though. Andrea joined the Painters Club house today. Congratulations, Andrea. Penny says, I need to find the transfer. If you're talking about the graphite paper, um, there's some linked in my Amazon favorites that you can go grab. Okay, you can see all of our design now is right here on the door hanger. Um, now, if at this point you had decided, oh, I need to paint over some of the lines, like I need to paint this whole area white or whatever, you could trace this with Sharpie, and the Sharpie will still throw, show through your white. So that would keep you from having to like retrace everything. But since I'm just going to paint each section like a different color, that's not going to be necessary. So I'm going to skip that step. What's the difference between plain wood and etched wood? So this would be plain wood. Etched wood would be like, do I have a piece laying around here? I bet I do. If you'll give me a second, I will grab one and show you. Uh, right over here, I think I have one. Well, I said I did. Oh, I know where I can grab one. There's one under my craft desk right over here. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, so this, this is a little bitty example. Little bitty. <laughs> but do you see how it's got the lines on there? 
the lines are laser etched or carved in the surface and you can paint right over these lines and still see them through the paint so that you can continue to paint the entire design. This is what we mean by etched. Um, all of our designs in our shop come like this. So it's like paint by number practically, only there's no numbers. <laughs> yes, I am from Kentucky. Nice to meet you. How do you, you how do you reuse transfer paper? So, um, no, the design won't be left over from the previous design. If I open this up and show you, the inside of the graphite paper does still sort of have like the design. You can kind of see it on the paper, but that doesn't really affect it when you go to use it again and trace it because, you know, you're not tracing over the same exact spot on the graphite paper the second time. I have used the same piece of graphite. This is a newer piece, but I have reused the same piece of graphite paper probably a hundred times. So it just keeps working. The flower uh, design I'm painting tonight, this one is a 20 inch. I painted, I printed out the 20 inch template. That's what size this is. It's a 20 inch template. Our designs come with four inch, four sizes in the zip file. So this is the 20 inch one. Um, the one I used last night was a 12 inch size. Uh, okay. Gum erasers work best. Thank you for that, Diana. I'll have to check those out. Where do you purchase the graphite paper? It is on uh, in my Amazon favorites. Amazon favorites. I wonder if I can drop my Amazon link in here for you. Depending on where you're watching from, this may or may not appear. There we go. So if you're watching on, um, I can put it up on the screen though. So you could screenshot this. This is my Amazon uh, favorites shop. So you can go and find what you need in there. Uh, Murray, Kentucky. That's where I'm, I'm from. That's my hometown. Go Murray State. Woo -hoo. Okay. Now let's go ahead and paint our design. I'm kind of doing a lot of talking and not a lot of painting, so I gotta get busy. All right. So we're going to paint the bottom white and tan. And so let's just go ahead and yeah, I think the 20 inch is probably the best size for selling that Dana. Cause it's like the standard like door hanger size. Um, or it's the size I consider standard. And so I'm just using a flat tip brush and we're just going to paint in this design. Now, let me check my picture because we've got our reference photo here. Uh, so the bottom section is white, tan, white, no, tan. So this is tan. It's hard to tell. I think the lines on my template are missing, missing, a, <laughs> missing a line. So uh, let's see. We'll paint this one and this one tan, and then these two white. That's what we're gonna do. Executive decision has been made. Sometimes you just gotta go for it. <laughs> Let me know if y'all have any questions. Tonight we're talking about the Painter's Clubhouse, and so I'll be painting this as if I am a person who is like stage two in the Painter's Clubhouse. Um, a person in stage two has likely already um, painted you know, half a dozen door hangers or so, and they're starting to kind of get the hang of it a little bit, and they're ready to start um, adding a few more details when they paint. Um, they've gotten up the courage to use the jigsaw and cut out their own blank, stuff like that. Um, and so it's different than somebody who's like a beginner or stage one. So last night, stage one, that kind of person is probably a little afraid to cut out their own blanks. Um, they maybe are just going to keep the design super simple. Nothing wrong with that. Then we've all got to start somewhere. And so stage two is going to be adding more detail. Hey, Megan. Um, and so if you end up joining the Painters Clubhouse, you get instant access to over a hundred different designs that are in our members library. We showed you that this morning when we gave the virtual tour. Um, and each one of those templates comes with a video tutorial that shows you exactly how to paint it. So you're not going to have to figure out any of this on your own. Susie says, I'm still afraid to cut my own. That's okay, Susie. We also have the option, if you want to purchase the wooden blanks from us for an additional cost, you can just use your Painters Club House discount code and get 20% off your, um, your order every time you order. Um, you all, we also have an exclusive discount code that you can use on the Deco Art website to order paint. So I think it's 30% off. Hi, Laura. 
Let me know what questions you guys have. I'll be happy to answer anything about anything. <laughs> um, so for the most part these days, I cut my door hangers out using a laser machine. And um, a lot of you guys have purchased laser machines of your own, but I cut my jig... I cut my door hangers myself by hand for years using a jigsaw or a scroll saw. And so don't feel like you have to rush out and spend, you know, thousands of dollars on a laser machine. That is something that I um, upgraded to after many years of doing this and being in business. And so it's not something you have to jump right into. <laughs> Lauren said, Tamara knows I've debated for years about Painters Clubhouse, but I finally gave in thinking I'll try it for the summer. I'm so excited. I already know she's an amazing teacher. Lauren has been crafting with me for a long, long time. And she said, I want to do it. She said, I just don't think I'm going to have the time because she's a, a teacher. And so as a teacher, her summertime is pretty much only her, her only free time. So she signed up at least for the summer and we'll see how it goes from there. Right. <laughs> um. Let's see. You couldn't find the bunny in the free library. Do we have a bunny in the free library? I don't recall. Allison says, you've inspired me to want to cut my own door hangers. I haven't even tried it yet, but I will very soon. Allison, you will do so much better than you think. And like I said, the jigsaw blade makes all the difference. I was cutting this afternoon and I did not bother to change out the blade that was already in the, the jigsaw. It was a thicker one. It said wood on it but it still wasn't like a scrolling blade with 20 tips per inch or TPI. And I struggled to go in and out of these little cracks and crevices because I was too stubborn to go find the proper size blade. And I'm like, it's only one door hanger. I can do this with just this one door hanger. But by the end of it, I was like, man, I should have just bitten the bullet and found the blade that I needed and made the whole job a lot easier. So just know that if you're struggling, with jigsaw cutting, it may be the blade you're using. Get a scrolling blade. It'll say scrolling on it. It'll say it's made for wood and it has to have 20 tips per inch. Also, you need to pay attention to the type of blade your jigsaw requires. So there's two kinds of blade. There's U-shank and T-shank. And that refers to the, the opposite, not the cutting end, but the end that goes into the, the tool and the shape of it. So some of them are shaped that have like a little U at the top and some of them have like a little sort of T shape. So pay attention to which one yours requires before you buy your blades. Laura says, once you start cutting them out yourself, you'll never stop. Yeah, because then it's like the sky's the limit, right? Like there are, there's nothing holding you back from painting anything you could possibly want to paint because all you got to do is figure out how to get a template for it and you can cut it and you can paint it. So it's like, there's nothing stopping you. Lauren said, I'll likely be hooked. I could craft with you all the time, but you know that too. Oh, I appreciate that. Uh, Dana says, I've only painted the happy flowers and bought circles from Hobby Lobby. It was half inch thick. Do they need to be that thick? No, no, no. So I don't actually like them to be that thick. It's hard to find sometimes the quarter inch thick ones, but quarter inch is what I prefer. Um, let's see, I need to pick a tan color here. Uh, and so I've heard that some of the stores are starting to carry some of the, the thinner ones. So just keep a lookout for those. Hopefully they're getting better about carrying those. Okay, this color is called toffee. I was looking for a tan that's kind of uh, warm, a warm tan, as opposed to like this one. This one's like a cool color. Um, this one's much warmer. It's got almost like a peachy vibe to it. It's actually just about the same color as this wood already. So it's like, it feels like you're putting foundation on your face or something just to cover up the blemishes. We're covering up the, um, let me get a little bit more water. This paint's a little thick. We're covering up the, the wood and, um, the wood grain. That's what I'm trying to say. It just wasn't coming out. Autumn says, Autumn's been in the clubhouse for a long time. You're an OG, aren't you, Autumn? She's been in there since the very, very beginning, I believe. So she would know. She said, it's a great place to start and continue, even if you know what you're doing. I've been in it since day one, and it's taught me a lot. I should have read the whole comment. I knew you had been in there since the beginning. I appreciate you so much saying that. But yeah, we've had the Painters Clubhouse for four years now, so that's, that's the length of Autumn and I's um, relationship. <laughs> it may even extend past that. I don't know how long you were following me before you joined the Painters Clubhouse.
notice how like all it's not really changing color but it is like smoothing out the look of that wood grain <laughs> so here's it here's the difference it's almost the same color as the wood but we're getting rid of the wood grain carolyn says i don't like the quarter inch but when i paint them they warp oh well um Hmm. I don't have any problem with mine warping. Are you applying any kind of sealer to it at the end when you're done painting? I apply a clear coat sealer to the front and sometimes also the back, depending on how much weather it's going to be exposed to. Are your arms that dark? No, it's something about the, <laughs> it's something about this overhead camera. But see, there's my tan line from my Apple Watch. But when I hold them up here, that's more accurate to what their color is. It's something to do with this crazy overhead camera picking up a lot of red tones. I don't know. I'm not that tan. I know that. I was going to try to straighten that line out a little bit. It felt a little crooked. Okay. Um, also, there's an itty bitty spot right up in here that's supposed to be tan. I'm not going to be real careful about staying in the lines to paint that because it's just the same color as the wood. Okay, let's move on to painting our greenery. Um, last night we used this lovely Irish moss color, which is probably what we're going to use tonight also. Um, but we might add some more details to our leaves tonight. And then maybe tomorrow night when we paint it, we'll do like some shading or something on our leaves because that's probably something that more like a stage three kind of person would do. They warp before the sealer. Hmm. I wonder, are you sure it's quarter inch and not eighth of an inch? Because I've never had quarter inch stuff warp from painting it. That's really strange to me. Oh, hang on. All this paper is getting in my way. You would think I have a big enough craft desk, but, and I just got my boob in the paint. <laughs> but it seems like it doesn't matter how much space I have. I always need more. I can't get comfortable. Irish moss for 34 cents at the Hobby Lobby today. Lauren, that's a deal. I love this color. It's so vibrant. So yeah, check the clearance section at your Hobby Lobby. Lauren scored some really good deals on paint today. Um, so one thing about painting one of these that is a um, jigsaw cut blank is you want to paint those raw edges. You don't want to leave them the color of the wood. It's going to look a little unfinished if you don't paint those edges. Now, if you've watched me before, you know that I do not paint the edges when I'm painting something that's been laser cut. So it looks fine when it's laser cut because it's got that nice crisp black edge. But when it's un when it's unfinished like this and it's just wood, I always paint those edges. Let's see. Let's go ahead and paint this one up here. And I'm still using this um, half inch thick flat tip brush. I'm just kind of going around the perimeter of the leaf designs before I fill them in. Oh, they are eighth of an inch. That's probably what your problem is, Carolyn. So the quarter inch would be much better for you. How did you start with the cutters? Straight to the big one or did you try a smaller one first? Um, what do you mean? Can you expand on your question? Like, are you talking about the size of the tools or the size of the things I was cutting out? Or are you talking about laser machines? More details to your question, please. Um, Where do we get the cutout? So Ruth, this is one that I cut out myself um, using a jigsaw. I cut it out by hand. If you want to get one of our laser cut uh, designs, you can find those at shopdoorhangers.com. I did put the link to this particular design up in the video description so you can easily find it. I also put the link to the template. So if you want to cut out your own or maybe trace this one on a wooden round like the one that's hanging up behind me that we did last night, um, you can grab the template or the blank. Hey, Charlie. I ate my whole she just burger. got home from soccer practice. You no. ate a whole cheeseburger. No, I literally went through it. Like, like through just it. right through it, huh? Like, you like, must have played really. I, know, I, went, I went super fast. You must have played really hard at soccer and you had an appetite, you think? Excuse me. Who's you? You must have drank some Dr. Pepper, too. Huh? No, we didn't get Dr. Pepper. Daddy didn't let you get Dr. Pepper? No. Wow, what fun is that? 
Yeah, but at least I got a breakfast. <laughs> I have to get my bread. Okay, shut the door, please. Okay, I still have some room, so I can eat my bread. All right, good job. <laughs> she just got home from soccer practice, and she was starving. She ate a whole cheeseburger, and she was so proud of herself. She had to come in here and tell me about it. That's my daughter, Charlie. She turns seven next week. <laughs> Please tell me the width you use on your board, on the boards. So quarter inch, see, one quarter inch. Hey, Kristen B, it has been a while, girlfriend. How are you doing? Is business still going? Are you still selling cutting door hangers and all the things? <laughs> Laser cutters. Okay, so Sheila was asking, um, how did you start with the cutters? So I started out with a Glowforge cutting laser machine. Um, I've since kind of quit using it because I now have a Thunder Laser Nova 24. Um, and so it is much faster. It's able to cut bigger pieces. Um, and I don't have to go through as many steps when I cut something with it. Like I don't have to use the masking material and all that like I have to do when I use the Glowforge. So I've pretty much stopped using my Glowforge. Matter of fact, somebody on Instagram the other day, or not the other day, but several months ago, messaged me asking me if I would sell it. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to keep it. And today I kind of had the thought, maybe I should sell it. So I don't know who you were that asked about it. And I don't even know what I would end up selling it for. But if it was you, send me another message and we'll see what we can work out. Because I'm just I, it's sitting here collecting dust. There's no reason I should keep it. Um, I'm not using it anymore. Um, so, but Thunder Laser is amazing. It's, it can cut up, cut out something that's up to 24 inches wide. Whereas the Glowforge can only go up to 19 inches wide by 11 inches deep. Um, now, if you were going to cut out something that was more than 15 inches deep, on, I think 15, on the th under Thunder, you would have to cut it in two sections and use the pass-through. So I have, I've made a video on how to do that in case any of you guys want to see it. It's um, on here or it's also on my YouTube channel and stuff and on TikTok. Marsha says, I'm signing up for your clubhouse tomorrow. I have high hopes. I'm very excited. Well, Marsha, I hate for you to miss out on our um, bonuses that go away tonight at midnight. Um, first one is how to paint faster. Top tips from creatives. How to sell your door hanger, even if you don't have a business yet. And number three is this lovely design that you see hanging up behind me. This one right here. It's a very fun technique. Um, it's a video teaching you how to do that. So, if you want to get those three bonuses, be sure and sign up tonight. I hate for you to miss out on them if you wait till tomorrow. Um, let's see. I use a quarter inch revolution plywood. Da Nora, what a cool name. My son Brett has now come in. What's up, Brett? Um, I'm going to need a size up of the cleats. Need new cleats, okay. And probably by next semester, I'm going to need a new eye. A new glove. You're just growing like a weed, aren't you? We probably need to take you and have your foot measured because you may have jumped two shoe sizes. Your brother jumped like four shoe sizes when he started growing. So I hate to like just buy you some and then they might not be the right size. So we'll see. Did Charlie just shut the door and shut us in here? <laughs> uh, you can get Revolution Plywood at Lowe's, Pamela. Um, so yes, Vivian, you can order this wood cut out from me. It's available at shopdoorhangers.com. Um, go on, go up to the link up in the video description and you can go right to this design. It's called flowers for mom. Did you have another question, Brett? No. You just miss me and want to hang out in here? No. That's fine. You can pull up a chair and sit with me if you want. How did your, um, study guide turn out? Did you turn that in at school today? Mm, I think we did. You think you did? Uh, he either took it up or he just looked at it. You inherited a dog, Kristen. That's crazy. Ooh, dog. And you've been helping your mom since their mom, your siblings since their mom passed away. Wow. Uh, yes, business is still going. I'm starting to get back with parties. Yeah, I think everybody's getting started back with paint parties right now. Can you stop buying shoes? Cause I'm stop just... buying you shoes. Since when has a girl ever well, said no, that? No, no, no. Like, don't be turning that. People are watching me on that one. Yeah, but today, well, like when I'm. Is your shoe drawer too full? <laughs> yeah, but like when they get too small, we can sell them and then we'll get more. Okay. Well, if there's any in there that are too small, just take them out and put them in the kitchen so I can get rid of them. 
Okay. Um, when I clean and put all that stuff up that you found, <laughs> um, can I play with you? You're distracting me. I just painted this flower. Both flower petals I painted green, and they're not supposed to be green. Uh, what? I don't know. Ask your dad. Why do kids come in here and start asking mom stuff when dad is readily available in the living room? <laughs> Mom's in here working. Okay. Not that I really have to do this, but I thought maybe if I could take some of this green off with a baby wipe, it would make it easier to paint over. So I'm kind of wiping up what I just did. The kids were talking to me. I was distracted. I painted two of the flower petals green. <laughs> Rebecca caught it. She's like, that's a flower camera. Oh, man. Mom life. Trying to try to do a Facebook Live and the kids all come in here because they hadn't seen me all day. They came home, got off the bus at 4 o'clock, had to turn around. Their dad took them to soccer and baseball, and then they just now got right back home. So they really haven't seen me today in all, all fairness. <laughs> Christy, I didn't see this while Brett was in here, but I should have told him. You said, hey, um, can you cut Revolution with a bandsaw or jigsaw? Yes, either one. Do you still use Rev Ply? <laughs> yes, I do. I use Revolution Plywood. I feel like I need a t-shirt that says that. Everybody's asking the same question in the last five minutes. Uh, Tammy says, I have been a Clubhouse and Template Club member for two years now, and it's well worth the investment. She said, I am a widow, and I have a full to work full-time job. I love my membership. I don't always get to see the lives, but I always watch the replays in the evenings, and I never used my husband's power tools, but I got brave enough to pull them out and give them a try, and I've mastered them in no time. I'm so proud of you, Tammy. That's wonderful. Um, Ruth, it is $47 a month. You can sign up in the um, description up above. Okay. I think, okay. I think I want to use that same teal tonight that we used last night. That was the teal mint. I really like that color. It just, it looks a little dark when you first put it on, but it's like it dries and it's so, so pretty. So we're going to go ahead and paint this flower, the teal mint color. So far, I've done this entire thing with this same half inch thick, uh, flat, br flat tip brush. So you don't have to have a ton of brushes, although I do, um, to paint door hangers. Once you kind of start painting, you want to collect all the brushes. It's hard not want, hot, not to want to. Whoops. You can also sign up annually if you want to save and get two months for free. Oh, thank you for explaining that, Chastity. She put that up there. You can't believe how Charlie has grown. She'll be seven next week. We're having a birthday party for a Friday night. I can't believe it. She's growing like a weed. And then Brett is 11. He'll be 12 in September. And then my oldest son, Travis, this is going to knock your socks off. Travis will be 16 in October. October. He'll be getting his driver's permit. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> Any of you moms out there who had have advice, I, I'm not ready for this. Okay, I need to pick this up because I can't see the edges. Make sure I get those edges. Okay, see, I was making sure I got the, the edge right in there. I'm getting paint all over me also. She's older than Duke, but she acts younger and drives us all crazy. <laughs> She's kind of psycho-hormonal, but, but loving. She had a lot of, oh, wow. Christy said I collect all the colors too. <laughs> Yes, the neck pillow does help me, Holly. I got it on Amazon. Oh, I was trying to remember what other flower is this color. It's this one right here. Um, and I've noticed if I start getting a headache during the day from like, you know, from the muscles in my neck pulling at my head and everything, um, if I will lay down on the floor for like 15 minutes on that little pillow, all of a sudden my headache goes away. Matter of fact, it felt so good one night that I fell asleep laying on that little neck pillow in the floor in the living room pass right out i had a live to do that night also i think that was one of the workshop nights and thankfully i had set a timer or an alarm to wake me up and when i woke up the back side of my skull was numb like falling asleep like your foot falls asleep it was the weirdest feeling ever but my headache was completely gone so it fixed the problem it didn't take long for it to wake back up so what type of paint i'm using um Deco Art Americana Craft Acrylic Paint. Your glasses are so cute. They are pear eyewear. 
You can change out the toppers on the front. These are the gingham toppers. Um, I have a link for them in my TikTok profile. If you're interested, it'll save you $20 off your first pair. I have an addiction now to all these different toppers. <laughs> um, Y'all need the neck pillow too? <laughs> Well, I have it linked in my Amazon favorites that I mentioned earlier, so go grab it. It looks like, the pillow looks like a wave. Like, it looks like a tongue, like a blue tongue or a wave, and you just kind of, like, lean back on it. What would you sell the flower pot for? So, it depends on, I guess, how much work you put into it, whether or not you put a pretty bow on it and all of that. Um, if it were me selling my creation, I would probably sell this one for about $45. But if it's you, that's up to you. Because if you've never sold a door hanger before, you may have a hard time selling your very first one for $45. Um, until you kind of get like a little bit of a reputation built up. You kind of get established as a business. Sometimes it's hard to just right out the bat start selling them for that much. But it's worth a shot. You can always list it for 45 and then mark it on sale if it doesn't sell. <clears throat> I also don't like doing really fancy bo um, bo bows. Why can't I say that? I, can't, I don't like doing fancy bows. Uh, what company? Pear Eyewear. Go find the, the link in my TikTok profile. Um, but if I like to do fancy bows, then, you know, you could really upsell a door hanger just by putting a super fancy bow on it. I just hate making bows. All right, we're doing our second coat of the teal mint real quick because I could. You guys may not be able to tell on on the video, but I can still see the wood underneath the teal. You love teal mint. I do too. Do you paint the back of your door hangers? I never have, Ashley. I think it's just personal preference. Some people do. I've seen people who have painted the backs like just solid black before. I've had one or two people at a paint party paint the back side of their door hanger because they have a glass door as their front door or something. And they didn't they didn't like the way that the natural wood like looks from the inside of the house shining through the door. So they would paint like the back side just a solid color. You could also paint, make it a double-sided door hanger by painting something else on the other side. Uh, Ruth, if you will email our customer service, they can help you with that. I'll put that right up here. You can screenshot it if you want to. It is starting to come together, isn't it? Okay, so let's switch colors now and do the purple. We'll use the same purple we used last night, this lovely purple cow. It's a fun little name. Purple cow. I don't know why it's called that, but I like it. It's a light lavender sort of color. Um, and then toward the end of this, like for a little while, this one's going to start looking almost just like the one we did last night. But then toward the end, we're going to add some more details and things that will kind of like give this one just a di slightly different personality. We also could have painted it with different colors, but I just chose to use the same colors. And we'll change it up with, with something else with more detail. Now, I'm a pretty fast painter. If you're not a fast painter, that's okay. You take the pace that you want to take because as long as you're enjoying the process, that's what's important. And the longer and the more you do this, the faster you will get. It just naturally, you just get better and faster. Hi, Doreen. Um, Laura says she uses... Two coats of Rust-Oleum clear coat. Yeah, or I use sometimes the triple thick gloss spray from DecoArt. Hey, Maria, how are you? I'm seeing people popping on TikTok. Y'all click that follow button if you don't mind, and you can catch me live every Tuesday painting. Normally on Tuesdays, I'm live at 11 a.m. Central, but since this is a special week, I'm live at night every night this week. Purple cow is your favorite float as a kid. What? Favorite float? Is that a drink? Like a like a root beer float? Or do you mean like a parade float? Or a pool float? I'm really confused. 
<laughs> it doesn't take much for me to get confused though. Okay, I don't think this one's gonna need it. Well, maybe a second coat in a couple of spots, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. This purple cow covers really well. Q <laughs> said, yes, exactly. Which one? I named like <laughs> I named off three options. Like a drink? If it's a drink, you must explain what is in a purple cow. If it's a pool float, I've never seen a pool float like that. And if it's a parade float, I must not have been to that parade. I've watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, but I have no idea what we're talking about. Hey, Wanda. Like a root beer float, but with grape soda. <gasps> oh, well, now I need to try this because I love some grape soda. That sounds awesome. Now you've got me ha having a hankering for grape soda. I've never tried that. Purple cow. I think I'm going to make my children try that. Oh, thank you for this glowing recommendation. I forgot to take this off screen, y'all. Kristen, y'all got to read this comment from her. She said, y'all will not regret joining Painters Clubhouse or the Template Club. I've been a member since the beginning, and I've been following Tamara for years and joined every membership in class I can, I can think of except the Procreate one. She said, I can paint anything, but drawing is harder for me. I'm a single mom, and I've taught myself to cut my signs after watching Tamara. With the house remodel, I've acquired more tools, and my dad is now jealous of my Ryobi Tools USA set. I love that. Kristen is amazing. She is a nurse and a mom and a business owner and a do-it-yourselfer. I don't think there's anything Kristen cannot do. You amaze me, Kristen. She's one of our other Painters Clubhouse OGs. She's been in there for a long, long time. We've known each other for at least four years now. I think this yellow almost needs a little bit of white in it because it's a little bit on the transparent side. So I'm going to smooth out what I've already got on here, but then I'm going to dip my brush in some white so that I can cover up some of this wood grain a little better. Okay, let's dip in some of the white. How much is the Template Club? Your your kids love them. Uh, the Template Club is um, $35 a month, and you get all the new templates that we release on shopdoorhangers.com every week. But you get them all at one time at the beginning of the month. So our next bundle comes out April the 1st. Now, if you're also a member of the Painters Clubhouse, you get 20% off the Template Club. Just to, just a disclaimer though, Template Club is very different from Painters Clubhouse. There are there's no Facebook group associated with that, and there's no um, there's no videos or tutorials. It's simply a bundle discount on buying templates, and so the templates in the Template Club are different from the ones in Painters Clubhouse. So, like I was kind of explaining the other day, I feel like. Template Club's one of those things that you may end up joining after you've been in the clubhouse for a little while, but I don't necessarily recommend you jumping in and joining Template Club at the very, very beginning of joining Painters Clubhouse because I just don't want you to get overwhelmed. Um, as a beginner, if you, if you haven't painted a whole lot, sometimes it can feel like you're drinking from a fire hose by getting all those templates every single month, and then you just suddenly you're like, I just don't have the time for all this. But if you're like Kristen B or, or any of these other ladies who have a business, the template club could be a huge blessing to your business because it makes it to where you have new designs every single month to offer to your customers and to teach at paint parties. And you don't have to figure out what designs you're going to buy because you get them all and for one low cost. Instead of spending over $100 a month on templates, you just spend $35 and you get all of them. Not to mention it's a business write-off. But I'm not advocating that everybody join Template Club tonight. If you are thinking about learning to paint, Painters Clubhouse is where you start. That's what you want to do first. And after you've been doing it for a while, um, and, and if you feel ready and just like you need more design, then join Template Club. Of course, that's not to say you can't do both right away. I just want to give you a fair warning that you should not be overwhelmed and jump into both. Um, that's not what I'm recommending. But goodness knows, several people have done that. <laughs> um, okay. Wanda said, I'm excited to see you paint tonight. I'm so, you have been here for every live this week, I think, Wanda. I'm so happy to see you. Stacy, this door hanger is 20 inches. Ooh, orange float. That sounds good, too. So, okay, here's the problem. I get on here with you guys at night, and y'all start talking about food, and I get hungry. And last night, we talked about cookies. <laughs> we 
talked about cookies and I got off the Facebook live and I said, all right. And I went in there and I popped some slice and bake chocolate chip cookies into the oven. And I had cookies and milk after the live was over. Now, granted, I think I earned them. I, I did like four Facebook lives yesterday, but tonight you're talking about doing grape soda floats and orange floats and things I've never had before. Now I've got a hankering for orange soda and grape soda. I do think I have some orange soda in the cabinet, but I do not have grape soda. And I don't even know if I have plain vanilla ice cream. I think we have like cookies and cream ice cream, but that would be weird. So we're not going to do that. But maybe this weekend, maybe we could do that at Charlie's birthday party on Friday night. That would be fun. Hey, Valencia, Painter's Clubhouse is $47 a month, or you can buy the whole year and get two months for free and pay $470. It's up to you. Um, but there is a sign up link up above. If you sign up tonight, you get three bonuses. One video about how to paint faster. It's got lots of great tips from people who paint all the time. Um, the second one is how to sell your door hanger, even if you don't have a business. And the reason we advocate to getting you to sell your door hanger is because it makes the membership more affordable. Because if you can sell just one door hanger a month, it makes Painters Clubhouse practically for free for you. And then the third bonus is this design right here. Um, it's a bonus technique that we can teach you how to paint. And so, um, we've got a bonus video for you for that. So those go away at midnight tonight. So if you join by midnight, you get access to those. Um, Heather said, I was just going to say, do that at Charlie's party. So have you ever heard of a purple cow drink? Michael, Michael's in here now. He, he just now got double supper. No. Okay. So apparently... There's a drink called Purple Cow, and it's grape soda with vanilla ice cream, like a root beer float, mm. but with grape. Never heard of it. And then there's also one that people do with orange soda and vanilla ice cream. Like, that sounds good. Michael hates I've, orange. I've heard of that. He hates orange flavored stuff, so I can see where you don't think that's good. But I think we need to try that this weekend, possibly at Charlie's birthday party with the, with the cake. He's shaking his head like, we got 10 kids coming. That sounds like a disaster. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll try a little bit of yours, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's probably not going to be my thing. Hey, Cotton Chaos, she said, I like your shirt. Of course you do. You made it. <laughs> I think I was wearing a Cotton Chaos shirt last night, too. Uh, hey, Linda. Wanda says, you'll wish you had joined a long time ago. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Alicia, Alicia just said, is it Alicia or Alicia? She said, I just hit my year anniversary with the club, and I love it. I'm so glad to see all of you guys on here. Kristen says, you need to go to the store and get me some grape soda. Last night, I was craving cookies, and tonight, I'm craving a purple cow, and I've never even had a purple cow before. Uh, Kristen's giving out advice here. She said, start with the Painters Clubhouse, and the Template Club is a lot of extra stuff, but Painters Clubhouse gives you a few to start with. Do not be overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have your hands full just with Painters Clubhouse. There's over a hundred different designs in the Painters Clubhouse membership site for you to start with. So there's no sense in like overwhelming yourself with buying more than you need to start with. <clears throat> Wanda says, I already read that one. <laughs> Where's the link? It's up above in the video description. Um, I can also put it in here if you like. Those typing classes in high school are coming in handy right now. You can type fast. Okay, so this is where you go if you need to screenshot it. I'm like, did I spell it right? I was checking, checking it. You found it. Okay, good. Mary, Mary Catherine. Hey, girlfriend. She said, we got crumble cookies, a worm and gooey. Oh, they're so good. But yeah, they're huge. I think it takes me at least two sittings to finish a crumble cookie. Oh, yeah, we need vanilla ice cream, too. They're adding that to your grocery list. <laughs> uh, Painters Clubhouse is only open two times a year, y'all. I'm going to base coat this um, flower with white because last night we had a hard time getting the pink to cover some of this wood grain. Charlie, we'll talk about it later, girlfriend. You're going to have to work on keeping that bedroom clean, okay? Okay. You can still watch TV. Do you need to take a bath? Mm -hmm. I want to go to Ooh, brownies sound good, Jessica. Go They're trying to make me hungry. I told them last night they had me craving cookies, and when we got off here, I baked cookies. And then tonight they've got me craving uh, grape soda with an ice cream, and I've never even had that before.
you have a knock at your door. That would be Charlie. She came in here wanting to play video games, but she got her video game privileges taken away because her room is an absolute atrocity. It's, it's horrible. And so I told her she's going to have to work on keeping her room clean for a little while before she earns those video game privileges back. Because I spent, I wasted an entire hour of my day today searching for soccer cleats. You know where they were? In a Walmart bag in the bottom back corner of her closet that we had just cleaned out two days prior. And so what she did was when she got home from soccer, instead of emptying the Walmart bag out and putting things back where they go, she shoved, shoved the entire bag to the back of her closet. And just said, I decided out of mind. Well, guess what? Then we spent an hour looking for them. And she had to wear her old soccer cleats to soccer today. And they hurt her feet. Mama has no sympathy. None at all. Charlie would like the Dr. Pepper floats. Yeah, yeah. You, she definitely would. She loves some Dr. Pepper. I bet the boys would too. Oh, yeah, they would. I bet Travis would like the orange soda floats. Of course, I love orange flavored <clears throat> stuff anyway. Uh, Brett and Charlotte, one of them doesn't like, doesn't like. Brett doesn't like orange soda anymore. Yeah, he's kind of forgot it. It's weird. Kristen says, I can't do ice cream or soda, so let me know how it is. <laughs> oh, no dairy, sugar, or carbs. I would die. You've lost 30 pounds? That's wow. Good I, I could lose 30 pounds doing yeah, that, but I wouldn't be able to keep it off. She calls it E to M. E2M. I don't know what that is. Chris says, I love the fact you're so real. Sharing painting and your family. It's hard not to because they just come in here. So, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, it's all about personalities. <laughs> Lauren said that Connor makes his bed and puts everything away. Whereas <laughs> Emma, her room's a tornado nonstop. Oh, yeah, because Brett, I mean, that child, if, if something has a place, if you tell him from now on, this is where your soccer cleats go. He will, without fail, every single day, put his soccer cleats there, and they won't be moved until he needs them. He's, like, really good at maintaining an organized system. Charlie, you can go in there and organize her room and, like, label everything and tell her this is where this goes, this is where this goes, and she will just stuff everything in the drawers uh, willy-nilly, and, and then you can't find anything. And, and then you're like, why is there a shoe in your Barbie house <laughs> and not in the shoe drawer. And she's like, I don't know. <laughs> I think she was using the shoe as a makeshift bed for one of her toys. Cause there was a toy hey. stuffed in it. Like it was laying in a bed. That's improvising. You say so. This color is so pretty. This is the dragon fruit color. And I've had to paint the flower white first in order to cover up the, the wood grain. So that's why we have a white flower and now painting it pink. Oh, Katie Hillman, said, Hillman Carter said, when I was a child, mother would always give a treat on sick days, vanilla ice cream and orange juice. Oh, that sounds day. way better than the Sprite and saltine crackers that I got. <laughs> what did your mom feed you when you were sick? Me? Chicken noodle soup or something? Soup. soup. No, it was regular soup. That was like the, I think that was in the guide for parents as a kid, like, I don't know if all the doctors told them, told them, feed your kids chicken noodle soup and give them saltine crackers and Sprite or 7-Up. And now I hate Sprite and 7-Up because it makes me think of those days when I was sick. Yeah, I would, yeah, they would, I'd get a lot of Sprite. I always craved orange juice and that's not a good thing to drink when you've got stomach problems. But when I was sick, I always wanted orange juice for some reason. Maybe it's like an iron deficiency. Hey, Valencia just joined the Painters Clubhouse. I feel like we need to ring a bell or something for you. I'm so excited. That's awesome. Congratulations. Now you can use hashtag PC sister when you comment. Sheila says, Charlie is my kid who is almost 15 or 16. So much like Loriello. Lorelei. I couldn't see the I at the end. Um, you joined late. Is that your husband talking? Yes. You want me to make him come around here and wave again? We made him do that last night, and he turned so red. Come here. You can come around and introduce yourself. They see Uncle. They see Corey all the time, and they think he's my husband. 
Uncle Corey's not Uncle Corey's not my husband. He's my husband's best friend. This is my husband. And so he's uh being our comment reader this week. <laughs> you can see he's real thrilled to be on video. Yep. Uh, I need a cowbell. I do, Sheila. That way, when I'm asking people to join, I can say, we need more cowbell. <laughs> Whoops, I forgot to put it back on dual screen so y'all can see both things here. Christy says, hi, Michael. Hello. She's back again tonight. <laughs> you craved orange juice when you were pregnant? I, when I was pregnant with Charlie, I craved um, pineapple juice. I drink a lot of pineapple juice. Or I would eat pineapple juice over crushed ice. Oh, Corey's working. Is he on? No. no. Oh, so Somebody he was on here. last night while he was at work, so I didn't know. I'm surprised he's not on here. Harassing us. Well, Kim Robert Colwell's a new member. <laughs> Diane said, I don't think Corey has a shy bone in his body. I know how to make him blush, though. Oh, yeah. you if can. you start talking about how he's single and he needs a girlfriend and, like, if he, he's looking for a lady... He turns four shades of red. So I know how to embarrass him. But no, he's not shy. He's a very extroverted. He could talk to a stranger. My daughter Charlie's that way also. She does not know a stranger. Okay, we're putting our second coat on this pink here. And then we'll be ready to start painting our tag and doing some other fun stuff. Ruth says, I have a haughty husband. Are you blushing too Anyways. now? <laughs> he's blushing. Anyways. I agree, Ruth. I think he's quite the haughty. Uh, he used to he used to be in the Marine Corps too, and so you should have seen him when he was in his dress blues uniform. He was extra hot then. Yeah, I can't fit it. Now. Can't fit it on now. It's all right. You still look good, cowboy cowboy boots and jeans and all that now. Okay, do you think we ought to paint the tag that light blue color, or should we go with like the original picture had like a darker color? See, the original picture has, can you see it on the screen? Has like a darker mm -hmm. teal. Comment, like, light, a lighter color tag or a darker color tag? It's hard to tell from the overhead view. So let me hold it up like this so y'all can uh, see the true colors. Would you go with this color, the Bahama blue, like we did last night? Or would you do, it's probably going to have to be quite a bit darker, like this color. This is called Mermaid Tail. There's another one. And if we look in that cabinet up there. Yeah. There's a box that says Rainbow Paint Pack. And there's a color in there. That, the top shelf. The middle shelf. Do okay. you see the brown box that says Rainbow oh, yeah. Paint? <laughs> there's a teal in there. You start getting so like teals and stuff. <laughs> he that doesn't know what color like is. This? Yes. Yeah. What's that color called? He can't read it either. Give me, give me, give oh, me, give me here. Desert tur turquoise. Desert turquoise. Okay. So we kind of have three choices here. Let me hold these up. If I can get a hold of all of them. So this, this one is the mermaid tail. It's got more of a greenish tint to it. The one on this other side is the desert turquoise and then the light one is the bahama blue i think i'm going to get rid of this one because this one's a little intense i feel like one of these would blend better and what's what's what so this is like bahama blue and this one is desert turquoise rhoda says the darkest one i'm saying dark rebecca says the dark one marcia just joined the painters clubhouse she said i could not miss out on that bonus i'm so glad you did marcia you will not regret it alicia wildland said mermaid and Jim and Cindy Carrier said light. Okay. I think I'm going to go with my gut on this. And I'm going to go with the Desert Turquoise. It's the darker one. And see how it looks. Worst case scenario is just paint. If so, if for some reason it doesn't look right, I can paint over it and add a different color. But I feel like this one's going to work well. Um, and we are going to put some more details on the flowers. Oh, uh, Sheila Dernal Arnold said, uh, or a... Uh, dark purple because you have a lot of blue already yes that's true i do love the blues though um but we can also add some like dark purple and stuff to our flower up here as well 
<laughs> you like the darker one? I do too. I think this one's going to work out well. I think the mermaid tail one was going to be like too intense of a color. It was like a real strong jewel tone. I felt like it was going to overpower everything else on the door hanger. Yeah, it looks like the majority of people are going with dark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Becky William Motes. She yes. just joined the Painters Clubhouse. Congratulations, Becky. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I'm so excited for you guys. I think this is a really good time to join because, like I said the other night, um, you know, with COVID dying down and everything, people are getting back to doing paint parties now. And so it's going to be a good time for you guys because it's not going to be such a struggle. I feel like to host paint parties or to sell your door hangers and to be able to set up at craft fairs, it's just a really good time. And you're getting into it at a good time now because this is the spring. So you'll be able to kind of like work on it through the summer, get better at the painting. And then when fall comes around and all those fall craft fairs get started, you'll really have a lot of time to prepare for those if you want to set up at craft, craft shows. Um, we only open the Painters Clubhouse two times a year. So we will open it again in the fall. But, you know, if you waited and joined in the fall, by then, you know, you don't have as much time to prepare for those craft shows. Whereas you could already be learning some skills and techniques and stuff now that you could put to use later. Um, Give you a head start. Felicia Johnson said this. She, she said, hi, I'm a newbie here. What is Painters Clubhouse and what does that include? So if you're a newbie, my Painters Clubhouse is my membership where we teach door hanger painting. So similar to what you're seeing me do tonight, this is a very similar type tutorial to what we would do in the clubhouse. The video angles and views and stuff would be very similar. Um, and so we teach two door hangers every month. And so in, instantly upon signing up, you would get access to over a hundred different designs that are already in the clubhouse, in the library that you can go in there, you can download, you can trace onto the wood just like we did tonight. So if you're just now, whoops, thank you. If you're just now logging on, this is a template. This is a 20 inch template. And this is what I used to cut out this piece of wood. I traced it onto a piece of quarter inch thick plywood. And then I cut it out using a jigsaw. And then at the beginning of this video, if you wanna go back and rewind and rewatch, at the beginning of this video, I transferred it to the wood using something called graphite paper. It allows you to trace the design and it transferred all the lines to the wood so that I didn't have to draw anything. I could literally just start painting in the side the lines. And so that's what we've been doing. I've been painting um, each little flower a different color. And now we're to the point where all the background is painted and we can start working on some of the other details. But all of those templates that I was telling you are in the library, the over a hundred different designs. We also have video tutorials that go along with every single one of them. And so just like tonight, you're following along a video tutorial. You could purchase this template from our shop tonight and paint it. Um, this is not one of the ones in our Painters Clubhouse, but we have over 100 different ones in there that you can go and access right now. Um, and every month we add two new ones. So in April, this will be one of the new ones we will add. The other one I don't have up right now. But um, if you join by tonight, you also get access to this design, this fun um, abstract. Here, let me make it where you can see it. It's a fun abstract sort of design with lots of different layering in the background. It's a lot of fun to paint. And so that one is a bonus that you get if you sign up by tonight. Plus you get uh, a video teaching you how to paint faster and a video teaching you how to sell your door hanger, even if you don't have a business yet. Um, you also get access to our beginner's course. So if you've never painted a single door hanger ever before, that's where I'm going to recommend that you start. Um, it's got everything in it from what brushes to buy, what supplies you're going to need, how to use a jigsaw, how to use a template, how to, you know, paint the design, do the lettering, use a stencil, all that kind of stuff that you're going to need to know how to do. Um, and then, of course, all these designs that we're giving you in the Painters Clubhouse are original designs that you can sell and teach in your local craft fairs, you can sell them on Etsy, you can teach paint parties in your hometown and have people come and pay to paint with you. Um, and then the other benefit to being in there is our community. So you have access to Zoom parties that we do once a month, so you don't have to paint and craft at home anymore. You can hop on these Zoom paint parties with us and paint and it's a lot of fun. 
You also have access to an amazing community in our Facebook group where we post our pictures and our, get inspiration from one another. Um, we also have an event coming up this summer. Whether you're a Painters Clubhouse sister or not, you're invited to this event. It's in Dallas, Texas, July 15th and 16th. Two full days of crafting. We are going to have 10 different workshops. Everything we make, you'll get to take home with you. Um, and you'll be learning lots of new skills from a ton of different people. And then, of course, two new designs every single month. So um, not just the templates, though, in the tutorials. We also have like guest teachers that come in and teach things like hand lettering or bow making. Um, if you want to see what all is in the library, go back and watch the video that I did this morning. Um, it was a virtual tour of the membership site, and it allows you to kind of see just the volume of great stuff that's in there. So we compared it to like a buffet. You go in there and you pick and choose like what you want to do first, and you can consume it as fast as you want or as slow as you want, but there's no pressure. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Uh, Sheila says, I'm looking forward to Dallas. I look forward to seeing you in Dallas, Sheila. It's going to be a lot of fun. What? Is, oh, I already answered that question. <laughs> Tamara. Hey, Tamara Gregory. My husband's here with me tonight. That's uh, the one that's come to, to the event, her husband, Jody. Oh. Tamara and Jody. She, he talks about you guys all the time. Yeah, I want to know how the hunting trip went. Is there another hunting trip planned tonight? Planned, planned this year, Tammy? Uh, Tammy, Tamara. Feels weird saying my own name. What's your store called to get designs? Shopdoorhangers.com, Lynn. <laughs> Mary Catherine said, I heard you made favorite aunt of the year. She's saying that because Mary Catherine also follows uh, my sister-in-law's business, Cotton Chaos. She makes t-shirts. And uh, they were sharing today that Aunt Tamara got her niece, Waverly, a kitten for her birthday. And I gave it to her yesterday and she's been toting it around like a baby doll. And that kitten is like laying there like a rag doll, just putting up with this three-year-old packing the back of the cat around. It's the cutest thing ever. Okay. I'm going to let you get me caught up with the comments. Oh, Tamara's telling you about the hunting. She said there's always hunting involved. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. I'm deciding what I want to do on these flowers. I'm kind of thinking I want to spice it up a bit and do like a black circle or something in the middle with some polka dots to kind of give it some zhuzh. So let's try that. That's another one of those technical terms. Hey, Uncle zhuzh. Corey's watching. Hey, Corey. We were just saying earlier, we were surprised you weren't here because last night you were watching while you were at work. Let me turn my ringer off. <laughs> Tammy says it's totally worth it. I joined last year and was it was one of the best decisions. Thank you for saying that, Tammy. All right, so starting with my black, you could trace something or you could use a sponge pouncer, but I'm just going to freehand add a little circle on here and kind of make like the center of a flower. It may seem kind of weird to do black in the center of a flower, but it's a great way to kind of add some whimsy to your flower. So these are going to be whimsical flowers. Let me make this one a little bigger. So after that dries, we'll add some white dots or something. I also thought it might be fun to add some little dots to our um, tag down here. So what I think I'm going to do, instead of getting a brand new paint color, I may take a little bit of this white and mix it with the color that we used on the background of the tag just to lighten it up just a little. So this is the, what it was this color called? Desert Turquoise. And we're adding a little bit of white to it. And I'm going to use that lighter color with our sponge pouncer. So this is an itty bitty sponge pouncer. We sell these in our shop, but get just a little bit of paint on it, not much, and do little polka dots. And one of my little tricks is I like to do my dots in triangle form. So see how they form a triangle? Now I'm going to take the last two dots that I did and create another triangle. So you ought to be able to draw <coughs> invisible triangles between all of your dots. And this will allow you to kind of make them somewhat symmetrical. Um, Felicia Johnson just got Thunder Laser and she's wanting to know if these Ooh. templates would work on that software. Absolutely. That's what I use to cut out mine when I'm using my laser machine. I have a Thunder Laser also. So yeah, when you buy the templates, they come with an SVG. Also, the templates inside our Painters Clubhouse come with the SVG. So you can use those in your Lightburn software. Another, 
another little trick is to use a um, sticky note to kind of like stick it down if you need to do a half dot. That's what I did. Corey wants me to tell you that he's up to over $3,000 on the silent auction. Awesome, Corey. Okay, I feel like now um, I need to do a quick second coat of the green or something on our flowers. I mean, on our flowers, on our leaves. Because if you look at them up close, you see how they look kind of splotchy and you can see the wood grain through the green. That didn't really show up till it started to dry. I think Corey shows up just to harass us or oh, yeah. harass you. Well, yeah, that's the little things in life. <laughs> I do the same thing to him. Yeah, that's true. Um, but some of you guys have been asking earlier, yes, you can get this design in our shop at shopdoorhangers.com. And if you're a Painters Clubhouse member, if you end up joining tonight before you buy this design from the shop, I want to advise you to go grab your 20% off discount code from the membership area um, and use it on your purchase because you can use it as many times as you like. So if you're not quite ready to start cutting out your own blanks yet, start with that discount code and buy a couple of blanks from the shop and go from there. Of course, that I could have been a little more enthusiastic. <laughs> about what? I guess about him being over $3,000 for a sign oh. auction. Well, he already knew that, Corey, because I told him that earlier today. So it wasn't like, oh, surprise. Do you still have the Southern Adornments app? Yes, we do still have the Southern Adornments app. So that's essentially um, our shopdoorhangers.com shop, but in the form of an app. So if you prefer shopping on an app, the experience is a little better than shopping just right on the website. Because you can add things to your cart and it keeps your cart for later. So you can come back and finish your shopping job later. Kind of like when you're shopping on Amazon and you put something in your cart, but you don't check out right away. It allows you to do that. She's got an interesting question. What's that? I think it's a good idea. It's like, do you have a bloopers file or things that went wrong? <laughs> um, I don't think you do, but I think we should get one together. It, that would be kind of hard, though. But you could, you could definitely put together a blooper of me, like, tripping over my tongue and saying things wrong or making fazy crap. Fazy. Crazy facial expressions. See, I mess up all the time. Um, but as far as painting bloopers, those probably wouldn't be as entertaining to watch. They would be kind of like, yeah. Now, the, the crazy craft candy cane fail, that would have been a fun, funny yeah, one. Yeah, Aaliyah says yes. She agrees to the blooper reel idea. That would just take a lot watching lots of hours of Tamara, and I'm not committed to doing that. <laughs> I hate watching lots of video hours of myself. Jim and Cindy Carrier, are, uh, she's working on a porch leaner while she's watching the night. Ooh, what kind of porch leaner? Is it going to say welcome? Okay, so we've got a second coat on our leaves. So we got our dots on our little tag. I like that little at addition. The black is almost dry, and then we can do our white dots on the black. I think I'm going to use the opposite end of my little sponge pouncer to do my white dots like the handle end debbie said i'm so excited i just joined i can't wait to learn more debbie you are gonna absolutely love it i'm so happy for you <laughs> so for those of you or how many of you guys are still sitting on the fence would you be willing to admit you're still sitting on the fence about joining painters clubhouse if you'd be willing to admit it please say so in the comments and tell me why. Like, what is the holdup? Is it you're afraid to make the financial commitment? Is it that you're afraid to make the time commitment because you're a busy mom or something? What is the reason you're sitting on the fence? Please tell me in the comments while I do these little polka dots. I'm using the bottom, like, brush or handle end of my little sponge pouncer to do these itty bitty dots. I don't think I ever knew that was called sponge pouncer. What did you think it was called? I don't know. I don't think I ever knew a name for it, but. Okay. See, even he doesn't watch enough of my tutorials to know all this stuff. Um, Tracy Graham said she's still sitting on the fence. She's worried about, you know, time to do stuff. Okay. So, um, are any of our Painters Clubhouse sisters right now the kind of people who don't have a lot of extra time? What would you say to Tracy? Because I know that 
there are several people like Kristen B who popped in here earlier who are single moms, who are nurses, who are busy people who are working several hours every week. And yet they still make time to paint because they know how beneficial it's been in their life to help them de-stress at the end of a day to decompress. It's been good for them um, emotionally because it's allowed them to sort of um, get back to finding something for themselves that's just for them that they enjoy. Um, so sometimes we get wrapped up in being a teacher, a mom, a wife, or whatever our occupation is, and we forget that we need something that's just for us again. It's therapy. Yeah, it's like therapy. It's cheaper than therapy, really. And so consider it self-care. When was the last time you did something for yourself? Actually, that's how you, uh, therapy-wise, that's the whole, that's how you even started doing door hangers, because Brett was going through terrible twos. Oh, goodness, and yeah. to pull my middle child was two and a half. My husband was deployed and I needed something that would allow me to like escape uh, just the monotony of the everyday laundry and dishes and talking to a two year old. And just I needed something that made me feel proud of myself at the end of the day, um, because, you know, with dishes and laundry every day, it was just the same thing. And so starting to paint really helped me rediscover something that was like just for me and so perhaps you're missing that in your life and painting could do that for you looks like uh, a lot of the other people i'm seeing uh financial and then i've seen a couple of people say that you know they're just kind of worried about it looking good you know mm -hmm. the finished their finished product or something well if you're worried about how it's going to turn out in the end just know it usually goes through a bit of an ugly phase before you get to the end of the project and you kind of have to get past that phase before you can really get to the part that you enjoy. And so if you will stick it out and keep going, a lot of times at the very end, you'll be very proud of what you've achieved. I think one thing that I've noticed just from the outside looking in is that the community, not just you, but the whole community, no matter what stage you're at, mm -hmm. you know, they're, su they're supportive, you know, whether you're just learning or whatever. Laura said she joined after being diagnosed with cancer and had to stop work. But she said, I needed something to do while I'm at home. So I invest in myself. It's my therapy. She said, if you can manage to sell one door hanger a month, it pays for the membership. So it's worth it. Nancy Beeson's an empty nester. She said, my husband worked long hours and we moved two hours from my kids. The community was so valuable. Lots of great advice here in the comments. Kristen says, financial is a struggle, but I pay the year amount with my tax money, and then you save money, so you don't have to worry about it. Or if you sell two door hangers, it practically pays for it, depending on how much you're selling your door hangers for. Okay, so what I just did was I lightened up this color with some white to create this slightly lighter color you see, and I'm using that to kind of accent my tulips. And I'm using a round tip brush. So I'm just adding some details. <laughs> yeah, Kristen B said, listen to Michael, he's selling it up. Yep. Michael believes in it. He has seen what it's what it's done for me and what it's done for other people. Um, and he's seen it firsthand what it does for people when they come to the live events and how much it impacts them and has such a positive impact on, you know, the relationships that everybody has built. So he knows. It's a weird thing that when I've met a lot of, a lot of husbands would come with their wives to the events and like they'd go do their own thing while the wives were painting and I'd talk to them a little bit and on more than one occasion they said, yeah, I recognize your wife's voice. <laughs> Uh, that's that's something weird, but I thought it was kind of cool at the same time. Yep. I was telling them the other day about how um, it might have been Tamra Gregory, but I don't think it was. Somebody was at the event, and they came to the desk at the hotel to check in, and I was sitting to the side, and she was, like, talking to her husband, and she said, I wonder if Tamra is, uh, is in here or where she's at. And her husband heard me talking, like, two feet to their right. I was sitting down and he goes, is that not her right there? That sounds like her. <laughs> he picked me out of a crowd because of my voice. I thought that was too funny. 
Uh, so I went with a slightly darker purple to do the details on the purple flower. It's kind of hard to see in the light. And then I'm going to lighten up the pink and do some details on the pink with by mixing the pink and white together. I agree with Brandy Jo. She said we are our own, our own worst critic. Oh, yeah, for sure. And sometimes that critic will be in our head and keep us from even starting it. Yep. Nicole said, I think it's something I need to do. I could really use some paint therapy right now. Well, Nicole, the link is up in the video description. If you sign up by tonight, you get all three of the bonuses that we mentioned earlier. So I don't want you to miss out on those. So go ahead and don't wait any longer and sign up. We won't be opening this membership again until the fall. Uh, Chastity Duel said her birthday is July 7th. Her husband bought a ticket to the event. Yay. Tell her husband to come. <laughs> yeah, bring out. your husband. He can meet my husband. They'll have a good time together. Okay, for the yellow, I think I'm going to go with a lighter shade also and just mix some white with the yellow. So I'm doing all of this to kind of add some details and stuff to the flowers, but I'm also going to go in with like a black paint pen in a bit and add some details that way also. This is a simple way, though, to add some detail without having to, like, do too much. So if you're a little intimidated by adding details, this is a good way to do it. I should have brought a paper towel in here. I have used the far out of that little baby wipe. Mm -hmm. No, it's fine. And then with the green, let's take... Let's take this jewel green that we used last night. Instead of doing the lines on there, I think I'm going to mix a little bit with my Irish moss green. Uh, Tracy Graham asked, how long do you have to sign up? So it, uh, the, the deadline is Thursday. I did have a thing up on the screen that said that, and I keep accidentally clicking it away. What? Chastity Duel's husband is going to be busy babysitting. Oh, kids. bless his heart. Yeah. Michael feels bad for him already. Although it's not babysitting if it's your own kids. I've told my That's husband true. that time and time again. So this is a really cool color because I have taken the Irish moss and mixed jewel green with it to kind of make like a slightly darker green. And I'm just using that to kind of outline some of these leaves. Darla said she originally joined, uh, she wanted to join in fall of 2019 and she ended up joining spring of 2020 and she figured she'd give herself two months. Uh, mm -hmm. or give herself a month or two and then she could cancel one. She, she's been a member ever since and didn't regret it. See, we have all these people who, I, that, there's countless people who have said that they've done that, that they signed up thinking that they would only stay in for like a couple months or a short time. And then they were just like so surprised at how much they love it and how much they enjoy the community. And I cannot tell you how many people, probably a, at least half a dozen people this time have told me, that they had to leave the Bainers Clubhouse for one reason or another because they like financial or busy or whatever. They had to leave and that they were coming back this week because they missed it. They missed the community and they were so glad they were getting to come back. So uh, we welcome you back with open arms. You can cancel at any time and you can come back at any time as long as the doors are open. Okay, we're going to draw this and then we're going to pizzazz it up with our details with our paint pens and things. Mm -hmm. Sheila said she loves the four ways to paint a single design mm -hmm. and then there was somebody else who gave advice that sometimes you just got to walk away from your painting for uh, you know a few minutes or a day and Kathy did that for 20 minutes and now it looks great. Jamie Mills is going to be trying to come to the event her birthday is the 15th. Yay Jamie we look forward to seeing you. Now Painters Clubhouse members do get a discount on their purchase of the event ticket. So um, there will be, like, after you sign up, there will be a thing that pops up with a discount. Now, that discount has a limited time on it. Um, but there is a, reg a, a regular discount code inside the membership area you can use as well. And Tracy Graham asked, Thursday during the day or evening? What? What's Thursday? I guess she means in Dallas. So the event in Dallas is a Friday and Saturday. Is that what you're talking about? Or if you got something going to Thursday? Oh, this Thursday when the Painters Clubhouse ends, it'll be at midnight Thursday night that it closes. Mm -hmm. 
Christy says the community is my favorite part, part of Clubhouse. I agree. Tamara's been a member. Tamara Gregory's been a member since 2018. Yep, I knew she was an OG. She's been with us a long time. How many members are in the Paint Clubhouse? Uh, we started before this week at about 1,500. And we've added, I'll check now, 194 new members so far. We've added several since just starting this live tonight. Um. <laughs> I thought I saw a question a minute ago. Where'd it go? Uh, so, yeah, the event is in the Plano area of Dallas. <laughs> Did you do the small polka dots on the black? Yeah, I used the bottom end of like a paintbrush or the bottom end of my little sponge pouncer to do those itty bitty dots. And now I'm using these art. These are special paint pens. They're like the Posca pens, but they're a little cheaper. These are the Artistro acrylic paint markers. Uh, they are a medium tip, and it's very similar to the three mil is it no the five millimeter size of the Posca pen. So we're going to use this to kind of add some little whimsical details and watch this thing come alive. So notice what I'm not doing is I'm not perfectly staying on the lines or perfectly staying on the edge of the design. Think of this like doodling. You're adding like the doodle lines to your design after you're finished. And they don't have to be perfect, so just go for it. I'll make that one a little longer. I'm gonna bring one in there, there also. You definitely want to make sure your paint is dry before you set out on doing this part because you don't want the wet paint to get on your pen. I had a little bit get on there, but it's all right. It's still going. Well, Kathy Green has the same paint pen. She really likes them. Yeah, I love these. I'll do like a little dot, dot, dot. And then I'm going to do like a line going down on the pot. Do another little dot down here and a line. Just add some little whimsical details. Let's see. Where can you where can you buy the paint pens? These paint pens are in my Amazon favorites also, or you can get them directly from the Artistro website. All right, we did black on everything, so now let's also do some white. Oh, here they are. I couldn't find where they went on the table. Can you say the paint marker? Paint marker. I can't talk. The longer we're on here, the more I don't make sense. Artistro paint markers. They're on my Amazon favorites. Make sure you shake them till they make that little clacky noise. Clickety clackety. Your glasses tonight are adorable. Thank you, Amy. These are the blue gingham toppers on my pair of eyewear glasses. Thank you, TikTok. Saying um, it looks pretty. Heather bought the Posca paint pans. Are those good? Those are great too. Yeah, I still use the Poscas. I've got a bunch of them over here. Um, but my Artistro ones are a little newer, so they work just a little better. <laughs> my other ones are starting to wear out, but they are a little cheaper than the Posca pens. So now we can kind of add a little bit of detail with our white if you want to, to as much or as little as you want. This just kind of brings everything like makes everything wake up. I feel like when, if your design looks a little sleepy or like it's just lacking a little bit of personality, adding all this stuff really helps liven it up. Thank you. you could also even kind of add like a little going out in the middle. And these little flowers. Um, okay, it's hard to find a stopping point because I just want to keep doodling. <laughs> okay, so don't forget, we can also go back. Do you still have that template over there? I do. And we can add our graphite paper back on here, although I probably need to make sure this is nice and dry before I do that because I see some green paint over here that's not completely dry yet. Can we see the hangers you were talking about in the earlier post? Which one? Which one? Are you talking about the ones hanging up behind me? TikTok? Maybe ask about these. 
So this is one of the ones we're going to be teaching in the Painters Clubhouse in April. This is the one we taught last night. It's now the replays on my YouTube video. And that one over there, the B, is a bonus one that you get if you sign up for Painters Clubhouse by midnight tonight. In addition to, you get a video teaching you how to sell your door hanger if you've never, if you don't even have a business page. And tips for painting faster if you're a slow painter. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, maybe that's dry enough. There's a spot up here that I'm kind of not sure about. But really, I only have to put the graphite paper over this little area down here because I'm putting our words onto our tag now. You have the template? Yeah, I do right here. So now that I've gotten everything else painted, I'm going to put my template back down, line it up close as I can here, get an ink pen. And now I can just trace around, I can either trace right down the middle of each letter or I can kind of trace around the edge of the inner and outer strokes of the of the lettering. And so if you decide to go around the edge, that will allow you to kind of paint right inside the lines. So you don't have to kind of worry about making thick down strokes and all of that if you're not very good at hand lettering. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a second before I paint the lettering. If you do struggle with hand lettering, we have several hand lettering videos from hand lettering experts inside our Painters Clubhouse library that you can go and watch. Um, Don Burgess asked, do you have to paint the exact way you are? Oh, no. Actually, I, I advise you or like encourage. encourage you to, you know, make it your own if you want to. Use different colors, use different patterns, change it up. And sometimes when I'm painting, I'll give you like ideas for how you could do it differently if you don't like the way I did it. So if I say, if I did stripes like I did tonight, I might say, if you don't like stripes, you could do buffalo plaid down here or uh, polka dots or something like that. And I'll give you some suggestions and it never fails. Somebody takes my suggestion and then I get to see how it looks with that other, other idea. So here's how it looks like after I have transferred the lettering. See how I traced it and you can see the inside and the outside of every little stroke. So now I'm just gonna take my paint pen and paint inside each of those little letters. Let me show TikTok so they can see. Um, Deb asked, do you, do you teach how to draw flowers, etc., or do you just trace? Um, so I don't teach how to draw flowers necessarily, um, but we do have a tutorial, several tutorials in the clubhouse. We have a tutorial for how to do one stroke flower technique. We have one for how to do whimsical flowers, one for how to paint hydrangeas. There's just a ton of different styles of how you can paint flowers, and some of them are more realistic than others. Mine tend to be, tend to be on the whimsical side, not the realistic side. Um, but, you know, that one-stroke flower technique uh, is pretty close to realistic, and then the hydrangea look pretty realistic. And that's so without tracing? That's without tracing. So if you want to learn that sort of thing, those are in the technique category in the Painters Clubhouse Library. And where do you get the ideas for your templates? Uh, everywhere under the sun. So sometimes I might just see a cool t-shirt and think, oh, I love that idea. Um, maybe I just love the colors that they use together. Or maybe I love the concept of like what, what it was on the shirt. Or maybe I'll see like a really cool gift bag or... Um, so I've, I've seen cute plates at Big Lots before, like paper plates that you could buy for a picnic. Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, yes. Michael knows when he goes shopping with me, I've always got my camera out and I'm snapping pictures of cute stuff left and right. And I'm like, oh, I love that idea. I love that idea. And sometimes I'll just, I won't come home and it's not like I will copy the idea exactly, but I will take it and I will find something about it that I like and kind of come up with my version of, of my interpretation of that in, in door hanger form. Well, Tina Weathersby Parish, apparently she loves purple because she, she do everything purple. I think there are people who are obsessed with purple, just like, um, you know, green. green. Yeah, I'm obsessed with green. And there are people that when I paint pur with purple on Facebook Live, they get all giddy. They're like, ah, yay, she finally used purple because I don't use purple that often. But that's so funny to me. Uh, Becky Williams just signed up tonight. Congratulations, yeah. Becky. Do you teach how to print the designs out? 
So the designs, I don't really need to teach you, but we do have a video in the beginner's course area that kind of shows how to use them. Um, but you just print out the PDF on your home computer, or you could like send it to your local library or somewhere or print it at work if you're allowed to do that. Um, but don't you have, do you have a video that teaches how like it comes out in four pages and you kind oh, of say yeah. Blooper. <laughs> yeah. So once you print it out, you uh, tape the template together. Actually, we did that in last night's video if you want to go watch it. Um, but yeah, we have we have a few videos in the Painters Clubhouse showing how to do that as well, especially in our beginners course. Ooh, Karen Stewart's from, she just popped in from West Virginia. Hi, Karen. Okay, I'm adding just a little tiny highlight with this really skinny pasta pen. This is a three millimeter and I'm just trying to add just enough of a highlight to this lettering to make it look like the light is sort of bouncing off of it because it felt like it sort of was falling flat and I couldn't see it very well on the door hanger. So by doing this, it should make it sort of pop a little bit more. Let me show you up close so you can see. See how the white kind of made the letters pop? You can either add highlights. Sorry, TikTok, it's backwards. Let me flip this for y'all. There you go. See how that kind of made the lettering look a little bit more functional, a little bit more like it's popping up. Okay, y'all, we are done painting this one. So let me know what you think. Tomorrow night we'll be doing this one again, but tomorrow night we will be painting on a laser etched blank. I had this sitting here because y'all were wondering what a laser etched blank looks like. So the design is laser etched in the surface. We sell these on our site. So you can go ahead and purchase this design on our site right now um, in laser etched form. It's called Flowers for Mom. So just use the search bar and type that in if you're going straight to the site or use the link up in the video description above. Um, so tomorrow night we'll be doing that and we may change up the flowers. Maybe we'll use different colors. Maybe I'll let you guys help me pick what colors to use on the flowers tomorrow night. So be thinking about that. What color combinations would look good? Because each night of this, we've been changing it up to demonstrate the different stages that somebody would go through in the Painters Clubhouse. So in stage one, they would likely paint it like this because maybe they're not comfortable cutting out their own designs out of wood yet. And so they would just buy a wooden round from a craft store and transfer the design onto the wooden round and just paint it exactly like the picture. Now, last night we did blue instead of tan, but you know, so that's the only real change that we made and they wouldn't do a ton of detail. So this is what we did last night for stage one. Tonight for stage two, we demonstrated like how somebody might have cut it out with a jigsaw because they finally figured out the power tools and they would transfer the design and they might add a few things that makes it a little bit more their own. Like we did on the centers of the flowers and adding the black lines and things like that. So tomorrow night, we'll change it up even more because by the time you get to stage three in the Painters Clubhouse, you're going to start developing your own unique flavor and style to your designs, which is going to set you apart from everybody else who's selling door hangers because yours are going to have your style to them. And so somebody in stage three would start to develop that style and they might have like a particular way they do their flowers or um, maybe they use buffalo plaid on everything or maybe they use a writer bottle i don't know there's all kinds of different ways you can develop your style and we have lots of technique videos in the painters clubhouse that can teach you that and then thursday night will be our final night uh, now tomorrow night's at a different time tomorrow night's 8 30 p.m central if you want to be texted when i get ready to go live be sure you're on our text list um, but thursday night we will be adding three dimensional elements so I might add a three-dimensional flower in the middle or a three-dimensional like wooden tag with 3D lettering or something like that because but somebody in stage four likely has really mastered the scroll saw and is able to cut out 3D elements or they have purchased a laser cutting machine and they're able to cut out three-dimensional elements. And so that will really take it up a notch as well. And so it's going to get more and more fun each night. So come and join me again tomorrow night and on um Thursday night. And if you haven't joined Painters Clubhouse yet, what are you waiting for? If you have more questions about it that maybe didn't get answered tonight, just shoot me a text on the, the numbers right here on the screen. I will answer your text as best I can. Um, but you only have until Thursday night to make your decision. We won't be opening again into the fall. If you were going to sell that, would you put a bow on it? Probably so. Yeah. And if there, in any time there's like a door hanger that there's like not a great spot to put the bow because you're like, well, I don't want to cover up the pot. I don't want to cover up the flowers. 
put your bow on your hanger so that it hovers above your door hanger. That's a great way to still add some pizzazz. And some of those, I know it, there was, which event was it? Was it the first and second one that you taught? The first one. And we I have a video for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Michael got up on stage at our first live event and he learned how to make a bow, y'all. It, it, was, was, it was pretty it cool. Was horrible looking. It was good. But it functioned. <laughs> Cassie said, could you use a Cricut to make a stencil for the lettering? Absolutely. Yeah. So you, some people use vinyl lettering. Some people use the vinyl as the stencil. And some people cut out um, mylar and make a reusable stencil. So there's lots of ways you could do that for sure. Well, Becky Williams, they just bought a CNC machine. So. Awesome. Uh, I see on TikTok, somebody said PC sister for two years, but I haven't had the time to do anything. I'm really hoping to start soon. Well, girl, get started. Pick, pick out just one project. Don't feel like you have to do all the things. Just pick one thing. All right. Everybody have a great night. We'll see you again tomorrow um, when we go live. So text me if you want to be notified. Bye, y'all.